From Fresh Africa, I'm Obidaya Johnson. I'm here at the, the Christian Intercontinental Assemblies, Crida for short, our church, here at the famous Bojoburam refugee camp uh, situated in Ghana. I'm here with a Liberian claiming to be uh, a refugee. Tell us your name, sir. My name is Jeremiah. Jeremiah who? Jeremiah Nambi. Welcome to Front Page Africa. Bless you, sir. How long have you been here at the Budaburam Refugee Camp? I've been here since 1999. Since 1990. Okay. I've been on this camp. The government of Ghana some times ago announced that uh, the Budaburam Refugee Camp will be demolished uh, on December 2nd. That is the first, the, uh, the first grace period given for September 30th has already elapsed. What are you thinking about? Well, as for me, as a refugee, the only thing I'm thinking of is that uh, I, I expect the, the, the government of Ghana to be able to come up with a, with a durable solution. We, all, we are aware that uh, after the secession, Man, there's a uh, refugees or local integration can still be at the refugee camp. But what we expect as Liberia, we should be able to come up with a durable solution for those who are integrated and for those refugees. So which category do you fall in? Are you are you opting for for to be are you opting to be locally integrated? Of course. Or do you want to return uh, to your I, homeland? I, I, you see, when you talk about local immigration, we have uh, different different categories. They came out to say that if you if you if you if you choose the local integration, it means that they they they, they have to address your case. And when when time came, they said the local integration it was based on case by case. Mm -hmm. So some of us choose their local integration based on our cases. Today. But to our surprise now, they are saying that they want to break the camp, they want to demolish the camp. So for me, I will be grateful if the government of Ghana or United Nations will be able to come up with, with, with a durable solution. So what's your name again? My name is Jeremiah Norman. So it implies that you are willing to go back home. Are you willing to go back home or do you want to be locally integrated in Ghana? No, if at all. If I will not meet the criteria for which I choose to be locally integrated, then I want to go back to Liberia. Because Thank we you. choose the local integration based case by case. Thank you. Let's see whether we can talk to. Uh, tell us your name. Let's see whether we can talk to. Tell us your name, sir. Tell us your name. I'm Moses Bramanganda. Uh, what's your status? Uh, I am the Secretary General of the Bundubura Council of Churches and Ministers. <laughs> Are you a refugee also? I am. Uh, what's the status? I did opt for local integration okay. because then I was in leadership. I was the, the coordinator for NGO and CBO within the Liberian Welfare Council. How long have you been residing here at Bundubura Camp? How did you greet uh, the planned demolition exercise that was announced by the Ghanaian government? Well, what we did. How did you greet it when it, the pronouncement was made and the attempt was also made on September 30th to demolish the camp? The camp? We, as Liberian refugees, the proclamation that was made by the then DCE with this meeting. Why? Because we felt that we have been used and abused by the authority. So we are you willing to return to your country? Sure. What are the obstacles or what are the hindrances? Uh, bothering you from returning to Liberia. I tell you what, that's what you are here for. 
2014, you can call me as an individual. I packed up to have it. That this place. I, when I saw everything I had, you know what happened then? When we were about to leave the store order that there was people in the country, we had to sit back and, and reorganize ourselves. <laughs> After that, then what happened next? We were about to get out of this place. So what will be your call now to the Liberian government? Well, what we will tell the Liberian government is that it is about time that they come to the rescue of their brothers and sisters in the diaspora, more especially Ghana. And that we, who they think that we are, one of them should be taken seriously. What's your name again? I said I was Moses Ibrahim. Thank you very much. Uh, let, let's see whether we can talk uh, to some female. Uh, uh, so uh, let's uh, start to this uh, brother. What's your name, sir? Uh, brother Prince Kofa. Uh, are you also a Liberian refugee? I'm a Liberian refugee since 2003. So how long have you been residing here? Since 2003. I've been in Ghana here. I even gave birth to my first child. Now, at, from 2006 to now, she has about 15 years going. The, 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 the Ghanaian government uh, is planning to demolish the Budaburam refugee camp. Yes. Where will you go if the demolition takes place? I don't really know because I was very small during the war and I entered Côte d'Ivoire. From Côte d'Ivoire to Ghana, I don't even know back home if I have family there. I have never communicated with anybody back home. So I don't know if I have any family back home. From the year 2003, during the World War III, I entered in a, um, on our Ghana um, army ship that gumbo that brought the Ghanaian citizens back to, like, to Ghana. It's a ship that brought me to Ghana since 2003. So how are you, are you surviving here in Ghana? Sometimes I go and uh, uh, help people with their grass. Sometimes I help people when they are they go buy goose and they are all blowing, I go and help them. Life is just difficult, my brother. Life so you can't return difficult. home now because you don't no, know whether or not you have background. family members or relatives there. Well. You cannot return to Liberia now because you don't know whether or not you have family members or relatives there. No, absolutely no. But uh, I escaped during the war. And since then, from 2003 to now, I don't even get no communication back home. Separate, separate residential permits were issued to some Liberian refugees here in Ghana. Were you one of those who obtained I, I, a one residential of those. permit? I'm one of those. And they gave me residence that are not opportune to do any job. So the permit gave you you are not opportunity to work in Ghana. No. So what may be your call now to the government of Liberia and others listening to you or watching? Right now, my all of the, the government of Liberia if they can talk to the United Nations that they take out to their country of Asada for some of us because some of us we don't even go to school. Since the war, we don't know where our parents are. We don't even go to school. What's your name again? Prince S. Kofa. How old are you? I'm uh, 41. Thank you very much, Prince. All right, this is from Prince Africa. We are staying here at the Budaburam refugee camp. We want to see how best that we can tour the camp. But let's talk, speak to this elder man. Welcome, sir. What's your name? Uh, I'm Mr. Kiamma. How old are you? Um, 63 now. One of the Liberian refugees residing on the camp? Yes, of course. How long have you been on the camp? Uh, it's nearly 31 years. How did you get to Ghana? I got to Ghana through Abikos. Okay. Was it because of the war or what? Oh, of course. Obviously, it was because of the war. And we were personally attacked. 
The government of Ghana recently announced the demolition of the Budaburam refugee camp. How do you feel now? Uh, we feel a bit confused and unsatisfied with the condition on the basis that the government have not done what it says it would have done. We are refugees here. I mean, we are refugees here. One of the protection of Ghana government has said to be one of the auspices of the UNHCR. Now we're standing. You came and brought the cessation clause. In fact, I said the cessation clause was forcefully invoked on us. Because you said, according to your, your yardstick for measurement, after two elections, there will be cessation clause. But the, the rule should have been, because there is no law without exception. We know that racing laws were brought into being by Hamad will be the great 400 BC. So when we make laws, we make exceptions to the law. The law said don't kill, but equally say don't sit down for some. It didn't say that you should sit down for somebody to kill you. That will have self-defense in law. Protection of one self. Okay. You brought us here. Since you have been here, you told us that you are seizing our state of school. Which I felt was unfair. Because the mother of the Liberian Revolution had ascended them to the power of throne. I mean to the throne of, of, of state power. To the throne of state power has ascended. You know she openly confessed to the TRC that she did not hold heartily or she did not hold this support the revolution but the near 10,000. You give me a chance. She also stated that she did not also order the demolition or the destruction of Monovia, rather the executive mansion. And others come from command, meaning that she was the command structure, the executive wing commander of the MPFL that uh, brought her into Ezra. They untold something that brought it on us. Then she ascended to state power with her missionaries. Her principal lieutenant, such as Prince Johnson, uh, uh, Roland Duo, Adolfo Duro, and others, all are in, 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 in the Liberian Senate. Most especially when Prince Johnson is holding positions such as the Senate Wing, Com uh, Senate Wing Committee Chairman on National Security. You know what I mean? Yes, Anybody can be killed under the pretense of armed robbery, under the pretense of ritualism, and, and, and any other thing. But despite, despite the economic challenges and other constraints in Liberia, mm -hmm. uh, Liberia, your home is peaceful and stable. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to go back to Liberia personally? Yeah. Not now. No, not now. Because I told you previously that you have these principal lieutenants in major state institutions. And these people are power talks. We say the exercise of power without pity is madness. But do you know to what extent the exercise of power? The exercise of power is sometimes they do it secretly, incognito, and you know, without people knowing who have done it. So you we think. Are, we, we, we told the people previously that we flare because of persecution and we fear now. Go, I mean, we are not going back for fear of being persecuted by the same people. Are you an, are you an ex combatant? No, I'm not an ex combatant. No, okay. no, no, no. But I'm an exempted, a qualified one year. Okay. The exempted qualified group of people. Since we were uh, chosen uh, co to consider POC, people of concern, we have not seen any concern shown us. In fact, look at the entire world. Globally, the world is suffering from economic recession due to the what? The coronavirus. That, 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 that surge up, the surging of the coronavirus. Eh? Your state, your country, your own country's president was lobbying for, for, for waiver of debt and money to, 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 to do other things. Now you can see that the number of or the rate of unemployment in Ghana is increasing day in, day out. And here in Ghanaians crying themselves. What do you foresee happening so, if the Ghanaian government uh, go ahead with its planned demolition of the Budaburam? Come. Uh, what I foresee happening, uh, there will be many, many other things happening. Other people will pack their things and go to UN headquarters. Other people will be in school houses. Other people will go to Ghana refugee boom. Or in one, flee for their durable solution. Because they told you they are closing it. They are it is ceasing to exist. And these are the solutions to be given to you. Optionally. So they brought those options. And you chose the options. Why not implement them fully to the letter? What's the call now to the cdc led government of, of President George Weir? Oh, George Weir, as I consider the best bridge over my tall water. I mean, the water is troubling, and the troubling forces of the water, we know that the flow, flow of water will recede sooner or later. And they are receding. My, 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 my. my call to him is that he come to his counterparts and discuss favorably for us because we are his people. We say by the people, for the people, and of the people. Right. Who got you in power? Power belongs to the people, not to you. We gave you power. The, conf the configuration of the body that is in power now is made out of us. 
Is it not so? There are no Ghanaian in there as a, a, a minister. There are no Chinese men as a, 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 a director. The same librarian. So he should come to our aid. Talk to raise with his friend, talk to them, and see how best they can solve the solution. Let them do a complete implementation of what they agree on. Because they came here and had a, 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 a tripartite agreement. And based on that agreement, let it be fully implemented to the level. Have full implementation to the level. Don't deviate. Don't do any kind of circumvention for any reason whatsoever. No, not at all. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, let's talk to you. Uh, what's your name, sir? Welcome to Front Page Africa. Thank you. I am Harris White Jr., officer of the president elect of Liberian President Ombudsman Camp, Chief of Kodoko. How long have you been residing here at For the Kodoko Camp? 25 years now. What brought you to Ghana? I was brought here to Ghana because of the civil crisis back home, like you were. That which I'm seeing here because of the war that brought me here and the war has ended but every human being that flee Liberia every human being that flee Liberia especially Liberian refugees at the time have his or own personal reasons for which to left the country Liberia and my late dad who passed on was a meditating at the past government of the late Samuel Kando he served in the army as one of the ranking officers Okay, and because of my late father, I was prosecuted by those rebel headed by Charles Taylor at the time. And if you can see on my head, I was tortured. And today, my head, I have not earring. The hands are not earring because of my late father's position at the time, and which I was about 10 years when that happened. So I felt victim, and I believe that going back to Liberia, why it should have president? But those people who have slaughtered on my father, beheaded him, I stay in government from time to time, and I feel much unsafe to go back to Liberia. That is why I have decided to choose local integration, meaning that there will be some improvement of my life in Ghana. So you have been locally integrated? Yeah, sure. What's, what's the status of your integration? My status have not been duly completed because the status will one year health insurance which have been expired after the expiring of the one year health insurance you are ACR was never able to renew our health insurance we ourselves did it which they told us that when we take integration they will do this they will do this for us and since my health insurance got expired i was able to renew my own unit here i was able to give up passport from liberia government which i see to be a breach of the united nations protocol because liberia government has integrated other citizens from the sister country like Africa, Sierra Leone, and they didn't give them their country passport, but rather giving them Liberian passport. So why should our country, Liberia, under the administration of Manaheli Sadi Johnson, allow our passport to be given to people who are up there for local integration instead of using UN passport to be given to us, or Ghana document, but they rather agree to give our passport to us, and in that passport of us, you see residents that were given by the government of Ghana. There are some breach of protocol where you as an integrated here in Ghana as Liberian former refugee are not able to do any drought because of things that they spare out in the passport. So it is very unfortunate situation we found ourselves in, especially for some of us that took integration and other down the line, Liberian as a whole. What do you make of the the pronouncement made by the Ghanaian government? Uh, relative to the demolition of it came, this camp? It came as, as a shock to us because it never started from the government of Ghana. It was a leaflet that was flying all over posted on houses by the chief who owned this land. You know, in Ghana, yeah, the chief has the land. And so when the chief proposed that, or when they started putting the leaflet on the wall, we have leadership. We believe that Ghana government is aware of our being here. So anything that has to do with the chief concern to have been channeled through the government of Ghana and not just to put leaflet to intimidate us by threat and what have you, and which they did. So we started raising concerns of people in leadership that that cannot be done like that. We didn't come here illegally, but rather legally. So anything of sorts we should engage the, the government of Ghana who have to do with our people who is concerned about us and we wrote other state institutions, we wrote our government embassy and later was able to reach our president, President George Okon we are and today the government of Liberia is fully involved in our well-being. What's your name again? I'm Harris 
Kuwait Junior Protocol Officer at Lincoln Ghana. That is the leadership of the Borough Camp. Thank you. Let's see whether we can take a tour of the Bodo Borough Camp. Let's see whether we can take a tour of the, the Bodo Borough Camp here in Ghana. This campaign holds to about 11,000 inhabitants according to the leadership. So this is a view of the Budubura refugee camp here in Ghana. Thousands of Liberian fled the civil conflicts in the West African nation and sought refuge here at the Budubura refugee camp. And we hope to interact or speak to some Liberians. Yeah, they are Liberians. Yeah, tell us your name. Welcome to Front Page Africa. What's your name? My name is Tina. Tina? Yeah. How old are you? Mm, I'm 13, yes. Yeah. All right, welcome to Front Page Africa from Barovia, Liberia. Uh, you are live. Uh, how long you been residing here at the Budubura refugee camp? I was I was small when I came in Ghana here yeah, because 1990 I was baby so. So you came here since uh, 1990, yeah, and now you are 30 years. Yeah. So I can't remember anything from like we were born from Ghana. Yeah. I can remember. Okay, the government of Ghana is planning to demolish the camp. How do you feel, and what's the response to that? Oh. I'm feeling bad because I can't get nowhere to go. I can't get nowhere to stay. Say my parents brought me in Ghana here. Yeah. Would I stay nowhere? You that only one is can with it. You think you have relatives in Liberia? What? You think you have all the relatives in Liberia? Uh, my father died in a war, so say I came here ready. I don't go back home yet. I stay in Ghana yet. Yeah. Are you willing to return to Liberia? If you are asked to go back home, are you willing to go back? Liberia is my home. I can go back home, but if I go, where are I going to stay? Because really, I can't talk to no relative from them. The government of Ghana is claiming that you people receive portion of money first. Uh, did you people receive a four hundred dollars in the past? There are no money for now. They gave me money. Okay. So the, this camp has been decommissioned or has been closed by the UNHCR since 2012. What are you still doing here? Well, that's why I say I say the camp closed. The Ghana people say they didn't get no uh, refugee here. And refugee stay on the camp here. We didn't get nowhere to go, so I play will go here. So what are you doing to survive here in Ghana? I can go on the Alata I go fly here. I can go Accra, I go to Alata. I can fly here before I drop back. Thank you very much. Okay. What's your name again? My name is Tina. All right, thank you. Tina who? My name is Tina Slonte. Okay, thank you. We stay here at the camp. We are still here at the Budaburam refugee camp here in Ghana, a camp that pay host to thousands of Liberian, Sierra Leonean, Ivorian and Guinean refugees. Our mother, church mother. Yeah. Uh, we are here on the camp, and the refugees are also engaging into many businesses to see how best uh, they can sustain them and their respective family members.
It has been reported that the government of Ghana has suspended the planned demolition, requesting all occupants here at the Budiburang camp, including Liberian refugees, to vacate uh, the camp from now to December 1. Uh, Labrador. Hello. I'm um, also here. Uh, uh, front place, yes, sir. Yeah, let's yeah, see whether we can speak. Uh, yes, no, they ask him for your permission. Let's see whether we can. We are still at the camp. Uh, as a matter of fact, the governor of like, Ghana sorry, has uh, halted the demolition until December 2nd. The inhabitants here have been given up to December 1 to vacate this area. The government of Ghana is also expected to hold discussions with her Liberian counterparts in the coming weeks. But however, fear has actually gripped the thousands of inhabitants here at the camp. As they claim, the traditional chiefs are the real owners of the land here in Ghana. And in fact, they have already started to claim acre by acre of the 141 parcel of land hosting the Budiburam camp. They have placed up some bulls claiming parcel a parcel of land here on the camp. It implies that when the planned demolition takes place by the Ghanaian authorities, the chiefs will now meet with the national authorities for the sole purpose of selling uh, the 141 acres of land to the Ghanaian government. Oh, this is the main road here at the Budaburam camp and we are hoping to talk to some of those residing on the camp here in Ghana and of course the Liberian refugees residing on the camp are uh, opting for few things. One is uh, the the provision of reintegration packages, that is housing and other uh, benefits, including uh, finances to guarantee their well-being after they have departed from the Budubura camp. We are still hoping to see whether we can talk to some refugees here residing on the camp. And the camp also pay host to hundreds of young children. And 
Hello, Jerry. 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 Hello, Jer
elderly citizens have been hospitalized as a result of the pronouncement made on the demolition of the camp by the Ghanaian government. Interventions are actually needed to help amicably resolve this matter and ensure that no one lost his or her life as a result of the demolition. My name is Obidaya Johnson, reporting from Ghana, particularly from the Budiburam refugee camp. Thanks for watching.